Joining us now to help answer some of your questions about the Omicron variant is Dr. Richard Besser, the CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and former acting director of the CDC. Thank you, as always, for your time, Dr. B. There's been so much concern over this variant. And while in many cases it's never too early to get ready, to start, can you just please walk our viewers through why exactly it's too early to know definitively just how dangerous or even not dangerous this variant might be? Right. Well, you know, Lindsay, this is a situation of incredible uncertainty. And one of the things that uh, I think gives me a lot of hope about the global picture um, is how quickly the scientists in South Africa identified this strain and alerted the, the global community. Um, but with that rapid announcement, it means that there's, there's, there's more that we don't know about this strain than we do. Uh, what, what they're concerned about is that there are enough mutations in this strain. It's different enough from the Delta variant, uh, and it is, appears that it's spreading easily in South Africa. The question is, is still out there. Does it, does it spread easier than the Delta strain? Will it take over in places where the Delta strain is spreading? Is it more serious? Will people who've been, been vaccinated against COVID so far, will they be protected? These are things that aren't known currently. Uh, some of the signals out of South Africa are encouraging in terms of the severity, but it's still not known, and it's going to be days or, and, and weeks before we have information on that. And because of that, we're seeing actions being taken around the globe to ensure that if this is something that is, is going to cause a lot more problems, countries are ready and have taken appropriate action. And medically right now is the best thing that Americans can do while we wait for more information, get the vaccine or get a booster shot? Should we concern about the holidays? Yeah, you know, I, I think that, you know, whether or not Omicron turns out to be more or less severe, um, this is really a time to get your questions answered. And if you can get vaccinated, if you've been fully vaccinated and it's been six months since you've had the Pfizer Moderna shot, it is time to get the booster. The CDC director made that announcement. All adults, anyone 18 or older, should get that booster. If you got the J&J &J vaccine, it's been two months since your, 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 uh, your dose, you should get a booster. Booster, that could help raise your levels of protection. And it's also a time to don't forget those things that we know work. So wearing masks, especially indoors in places where there's significant transmission, which is most of the country, making sure that you're, you're paying attention to ventilation, so opening windows. If you're gathering with people and not everyone's vaccinated, uh, making sure that, that those who aren't vaccinated and everyone who's coming together is getting tested, those things can help as well. It's not a time to, to say, wow, we're, 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 this is a major setback, but it's a time to double down, especially in the winter when viruses do so much better with transmission. And I should also point out that while Americans are lining up for boosters, much of the world is still waiting for their first dose of the vaccine. We've talked to you before about vaccine equity repeatedly over the past year. Do variants like the Omicron highlight just how critical vaccinating the entire world is, that global community? Well, it's critical for a couple of reasons. One is that everyone in any country should have the opportunity to protect themselves, their families, and their communities. And right now, it's really something where wealthy nations have cornered the market on, on vaccines. The other reason is purely out of national self-interest that while this virus is spreading rapidly around the globe, new variants will arise, as we're seeing now with Omicron. And whether or not Omicron turns out to be one that, that causes a lot of problems, the next one could. And so it's very important. The U.S. has been doing a lot to try and increase vaccine supply. But globally, there has to be more efforts to get vaccines to everyone around the globe. And of course, boosters do offer Americans additional protection. But in your estimation, do you think that they should be going to other countries instead? Well, you know, that's, that's, a good, that's a good question. I think that, you know, if, if I were uh, in charge of full vaccine distribution and could send them, I would make sure that frontline healthcare workers, elderly people around the globe were getting vaccinated before people were getting boosters. But in reality, that's not the question we're being asked. The, you know, in, in reality, there is enough vaccine here in the United States for everyone to get boosters. If we're not using those vaccines, they will not be shipped around the globe. We need to do more to ensure manual manufacturing of, of vaccines globally. And one of the things that we're also seeing is vaccine manufacturers starting to look and say, OK, um, uh, assuming the, the Omicron variant is a problem, um, let's, let's already work to produce a vaccine against that strain. 
the newer technologies, the, these mRNA t technologies are such that very quickly vaccine manufacturers are going to be able to do that. Uh, and if this is a strain that is causing problems, you want to make sure that those next round of vaccines get to people around the globe and aren't cornered just by wealthy nations. And I'd like to ask you about the travel bans as well. It would seem the state of the art sequence in South Africa has may help the world get out in front of this variant. But are you worried at all about rushing to exclude countries that that creates an environment where governments like South Africa might feel less forthright about the strains of the, vari the virus that they may find, find in the future if they know they will immediately be put on do not travel lists? Well, you know, I, I hope that this is really a short-term action to allow countries to, to gear up, understand a little bit more about the, the strain, and, and then relax those barriers. Because, you know, we've talked about this before, Lindsay. Viruses do not respect borders. This has already been seen in more than a dozen countries around the globe. It will come to the United States, whether there's a travel ban on or not. And you don't want to impact a global trade. You don't want to uh, do anything that's going to impact the economies around the globe, uh, unless there's an overriding health uh, value in doing so. And clearly, we've seen from travel bans, they are very ineffective, except in a very short time to be able to you know, put in place some measures for immediate control. At some point, do you feel that we should all just come to terms with the fact that this will be, uh, there won't be, I guess, an end to this pandemic, and instead COVID will become an endemic, something that we have to deal with for years, if not decades, but if vaccinated, not something that we have to be scared of? You know, I, I'm not willing to say that we we are going to accept as the norm going forward a thousand people dying a day from a vaccine preventable infection, 80, 90,000 people getting infected every day. I do believe that COVID will be endemic, that it is something we come to live with. Um, but we should not accept that it's something we live with with this high a toll, especially since it's preventable. We need to do everything possible to convince our friends, our family, our neighbors uh, to learn more, to get comfortable and get vaccinated. It's in their own self interests and it's also in the interests of those around them who may not get full protection from being vaccinated. Dr. Richard Besser, we thank you as always for your time and insight. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.